Praise the Lord, somebody. Did you come to church with your Bibles? Blessed be God. All right, are you ready? Okay. Well, uh, you like it? I will turn on to you when I catch it. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, put the book also in Ephesians 1, 18 to 19. And then I have a fourth scripture. In the first verse, it reads, The clean says, 9, 10 to 11, I will love with the bowing rivers to read of the course of my treatise, that you may want to know that is the scripture. That read the ready verse uh, this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been great and awesome in the house that we bless God for all that is doing. We thank God for the man, the great man, wonderful blessing that is given unto us. And has used to be a tremendous blessing to us in the last couple of weeks. And we know that that is the truth that is in the 2018. Undoubtedly, you will become and exceed in every way in the name of Jesus. I think somebody will shout a letter, amen. amen. Okay, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, For if by one man's offerings, death reigned by one, much more, they will receive abundance of grace and of the gifts of righteousness that shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. In 1 John 3, begin reading from verse 1. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the one knoweth us not because he knew him not. Verse 2, and I let this one. Beloved, now, tell your neighbor now. now. You didn't have to tell your neighbor now. now. Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Hallelujah. If in that one eighteen to nineteen, the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe? What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us as believers, according to the working of his mighty power? Our Father, we thank you. We thank you for the feast at your table. We thank you, Father, for the angels of your word that brings light. We thank you for understanding that is released unto your people this morning. We thank you for your word. Your word that is able to build and to guarantee your inheritance. Spirit of the living God, they reveal the truth. For the scripture says, when you come, you will guide us into all truth. I pray this morning that the word proceeds. That you will guide your people into the hope of the high calling that they have in you. The Father will be with quickening concerning their inheritance that resides within every man. The Father's eyes of the people will be open. That everyone will come to see the exceeding greatness of your power that is available to them as believers. This we ask, my Father. The Lord God, no one will leave us this in. And Father, we honor the world will go for let healings take place, let miracles take place, let deliverance take place. For let eyes be open in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For I am a yielded vessel to be used to bring your word to your people. We let your name alone be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Rule your world, that is the title, and the subtitle is Living Your Inheritance in Christ. Now you may be seated. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. In 1 John, one of the scriptures that we read, 3 verse 2, the Bible says, Now are we the sons of 
God. And it does not appear or become fully apparent <laughs> what we shall be. But we know that as we see him, come to have us when we see him, we shall become as he is. As much as the scripture speaks to what we shall become as we see him in glory when he comes. It is also speaking to our experience here on the earth where other eyes are open to the revelation of the risen Christ, we become what we see. Amen. For the same reason that Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1, that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, that you may know. That word know is the Greek word, Ido, which means to become aware, to see, to come to an understanding, to be sure that you may know the hope of the high calling that you have in Christ. Paul said that the eyes will be open, that you will come to know, you will come to see, you will come to be aware. Because a lot of people are not aware, are not aware. That you will come to know the hope of the high calling that you have in Christ. That you will come to know the reason why he called you. First of all, that you will come to know the, that you are the call of the Lord. That I said you will come to know the specific reason. Everyone under the sound of my voice. There is a specific reason. There is a reason why he called you. <laughs> that you will come to know the riches of the glorious inheritance that we have in Christ. The inheritance that the Bible says, fear not, the inheritance is incorruptible, cannot be corrupted. In other words, there is no circumstance that can corrupt the inheritance that God has reserved in you. The Bible says in heavenly places, not in heaven, but in heavenly places. In other words, it's the best way you can watch, access it. And the exceeding greatness of his power towards us as believers. That means there is power that is available to the believer. God says that your eyes need to be open, so that you will come to know the exceeding greatness of the power that is available to you. So you are not a weak clan. You are not a weak clan. You are not an ordinary person of the earth. That your eyes will be open. That you may know the exceeding greatness of his power available to you as God's ambassador on the earth. Because when you do not know what you have become in the dispensation of Christ, you will not experience or live it out or become it. God has always been consistent with his intention and plan for man to dominate and to rule the earth. Are you still with me? Yeah. When you go to the beginning, in Genesis 1, 27 to 28, the Bible says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he in. Male and female created he in. And God what? Bless them. Hello? Yeah. And God blessed them. And based on the blessing, God said, be fruitful, multiply, we replenish the earth, subdue the earth, and what? Have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. So God blessed them, male and female, that they are created. To be blessed is to be a power to prosper. So based on the blessing, God said, be fruitful. He blessed them, and then he said, based on this blessing, listen, God blessed them. He empowered them to prosper, and they were empowered to prosper. And based on the blessing of God, God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue the earth, and what? Have dominion. Blessed be God. 
So we see that in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, that God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The spirit that God had created in Genesis 1.26, that same spirit he breathed into the man that he formed. He formed what out of the dust? He created man. He created the spirit of man in Genesis 1.26, but he formed the body of man in Genesis 2.7. Somebody say with me. And he breathed into him the breath of life. A man became what? A living soul. Thank you.